So, I'm leaking blood. I have an internal bleed somewhere. Um, I, I mean, to be fair, women do that for a week every month. So, like, I don't even know what you're complaining about. <laughs> Uh, I've been, uh, fatigued and dizzy and because when I say fatigued, I mean, I'll sit down, I'll be sitting down. I'll be like, you know what? I'm thirsty. I should get a glass of water or I could just stay right here or, or I could nap for three days. Yeah. Suddenly I'm asleep. Um, so that's been a bit of a problem and yeah. I haven't running a temperature and all the rest of the stuff, you know, so I didn't know what was going on. Went to the, finally went to the doctor this morning and um they did tests and the first off i'll tell you doctors i he, he asked me um are you, do you take any over-the-counter medication and i said excedrin sometimes he said sometimes I was like well what time is it he, 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 yeah, didn't, that's not good. he didn't think that was very funny no also they, they that's they, a sometimes like, food also, they, they brought out, um, they, they had to take a blood sample. So they take, I'm like, why are you doing that? Well, because we think you might be anemic. And I'm like, wait a second. You, you, you think I might be losing blood at, at my red blood? So you're taking more of it away? I, I no, I need that. Well, Give anemia it means your iron is low. Yeah, red blood cells. Yeah. Because I'm losing blood. You have plenty of blood. It's just not any good. <laughs> so, um, what they did was, since I've had a previous bleeding ulcer back in, wow, 2010, a long time ago, um, since I've had a bleeding ulcer before, I'm not allowed to take Excedrin no more. I have to, I, I can take Tylenol, which is just the acetaminophen, but it doesn't have the aspirin in it. The aspirin's the problem. Um, and the problem with Tylenol is it's super easy to OD on. Yeah, so I can just... And just, like, shut down your liver and die. Um, I'm taking iron supplements, and if my headaches, if my migraines get bad, I'm allowed to take ibuprofen, but I have to eat food while I do it, and I can only do it in the evening for some reason. Also, I'm taking antacids because they're concerned that I might be eating my stomach. Now, fortunately... Green leafy vegetables just coming out your ears. Yeah. Tell me they suggested things like green leafy vegetables and they might have. Fish. They might have said something. As long as they suggested it and didn't just like load you down with pills, because that would be kind of irresponsible. They they mentioned you know maybe Some something shit about not eating Hormel chili out of a microwave dish. I like Hormel chili out of a microwave dish. It's good. Or it's else? probably not the best thing for your bleeding ulcer. They're they're not entire. They're uh, going to do uh, the blood test. Is going to take a few days, so I'm, I don't know yet. But this is what they suggested. I don't. I I can't really tell a difference yet. But all I, it's not like last time where I was puking up black blood at the ER. Yeah, that's bad. You remember that? Yeah. That was awesome. Look at it th this way. W when my mom had had leukemia, they were concerned about her getting too high in iron count. Hmm. And what they do for that, I don't remember exactly what the procedure is, but it's some horrifying way of like physically going in and removing the iron from your blood. Yeah. Like they call in magneto or something. I don't even know, but it was horrible. <laughs> so no, I, I still they can, putting iron in easy taking it back out not so easy but when i when i was when i was a kid when i when i was puking black blood that has got to be one of the top 10 biological malfunctions i've had in my life because that shit was fucking metal okay I think they actually that actually means you're possessed that was fucking awesome that was the best i mean well you know i had to have a banana bag and they did an endoscopy on me and I was in the hospital, but it was still fucking metal. Totally metal. <laughs> we had a slightly less exciting adventure this weekend. We learned that Peggy, my cat Peggy, who loves people, uh -huh. loves people, greets the delivery guys and we order takeout. Like everybody who comes in the house has to pet her. Apparently the Peggy children aren't people. <laughs> she 
children with the fire of a thousand fucking suns. <laughs> and we found this out because we had my whole family over. Uh huh. And I have three nieces and two nephews. Okay. And they wanted to play with the kitties. And I was like, well, Dottie, you're never going to see. Because as soon as someone comes over that doesn't live here, Dottie vibrates I... into another dimension. Yes. Like, she's just fucking gone. Peggy, I expected, would be a little weirded out because she's never met children before, but eventually be okay. No, I think like three of my family left with Band-Aids. <laughs> there was hissing. And like my, my niece is a, is a year old. So Peggy would dart under something to hide and Molly would get right under there with her. And Molly has a cat, but her cat's declawed. Oh, no. So we're like, no, when this one hits, she'll rip your fucking eyeball out. Like, and we trim their claws, but still, like, they can still fuck you up. There was hissing. And the thing is, like, she wouldn't run. She wouldn't hide. Like, she wouldn't yield dominance of her castle. You know, like, she was staying right in the middle of it and just fucking up anybody who tried to pet her. <laughs> like, no, this is my house. So finally, like, I managed to catch her, and I put her on top of the really tall tower. So at least the one-year-old couldn't get her. <laughs> and my niece, my older nieces managed to, like, entice her with some treats and the wand toy. And by the end of the day, like, a couple of people got to pet her, like, twice. But, oh, my God. Like, sweet, love me, pet me, I'm going to chirp at you, Peggy, was all of a sudden, like, demon cat. Good kitty. And wanted to murder the fuck out of everybody. Good kitty. And we did not see that coming. So apparently she just, children are a non-starter. I approve. And Good Dottie kidding. just spent the whole day under the couch like this. Grady does that too. Yes, you do. You hide from everybody. My nieces would poke their heads under the couch and be like, oh yeah, she's still under there. What if she has to pee? I'm like, Dottie can hold it for days. Yeah. <laughs> Dottie can hold it forever. Fun fact about cats, they originated in a desert climate. They can hold they can hold their urine. They they you if they don't want to come out, they won't come out. Yes. And the funny part was then they were afraid of Dottie. They're like, well, I'd want to reach under and pet her, but I don't want her to swat me. I'm like, Dottie won't swat you. She'll just back away. Peggy normally wouldn't swat you, but apparently if you're under 18, you can go fuck yourself. How are those two this from the same batch? I know it's weird. They're like total opposite. Like Peggy's new thing is jumping up on the little built-in bookcase that overlooks the basement stairs and scaring the shit out of me because she's going to jump one day. Like, <laughs> Peggy is absolutely fearless and Dottie is terrified of everything. If we change their food, like Dottie hangs back and she's like, nah, nah, you go ahead. If you don't die, I'll try it. Like, I don't know. But they look out for each other. Well, it is time for the... Oh, good lord, this week. Speaking we of has, kids... Oh, boy. We oh. have good? Yeah. Oh, I just gotta look at my arm fat jiggling on camera. That's attractive. <laughs> don't get old, guys. Alright, let's get the intro going. Each week... Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong? And <laughs> crazy. I swear to God, I'm if I had encountered this situation myself, I would have thought I would be in punk. So I honestly, this is one of those moments in life where, where you're like, you're fucking with me, right? Where's the goddamn camera? Um... There's really no good lead. There's no good lead in for this. An ATM dispense cash and notes for help from a man trapped inside. I saw this. This poor dude. But yeah, like if you got this note, you'd be like. You're fucking with me, right? Where's Ashton? Police officer driving near the waterfront in Corpus Christi, Texas, Wednesday afternoon was waved down, given an unusual tip. An ATM was dispensing handwritten notes scribbled with an existential appeal. Please help. Had to be a joke. The responding officers believe the Bank of America ATM 
spitting emergency notes with cash and receipts sounded like an absurdly constructed plot of a gotcha live television show. Then the machine started talking. Sure enough, we could hear a little voice coming from the machine. Help me. Help me. The officer kicked down the door to reveal the author of the notes, the man hidden inside the machine, was locked in the service room that housed the ATM. He began scribbling notes to the outside world in an analog version of the Wizard of Oz bellowing from behind the curtain. Actually, that's not exactly... That has nothing to do with the Wizard of Oz. Yeah, and, no, that that's not how that works at all. That's not the plot of the Wizard I mean, It's I mean, not like the Wizard was actually keeping a little dude trapped in that, no. The man was there to repair a door lock, which got the better of him. The contractor, whose name and company was not released, had left behind his phone and a device needed to open the door from the inside. Good job. So he just had the worst fucking day. This is actually closer to Fox Mulder in the X-Files movie, where he goes in to get Scully a soda and gets locked in with a giant bomb that's in the soda machine. But this... I, <laughs> I could just... Now, I would be the asshole who, when I went up to get my money, you saw the receipt, said, please help. Be like, nah, dog, I I, I, I gave the office. Sorry, I, I got shit to do today. I'm sorry. No, I'm good sorry. Luck. Good, good luck. luck. You have yourself a good day. But, because that would weird me out. That's one of those situations. Yeah. That's one of those situations where, like, I don't know if I want to get involved in this. Well, um, and think about me, who's already fucking paranoid about robots and machinery in general <laughs> if the fucking atm sent me a little help letter i i'd be like no i'm burning the bank down now like holy shit it's sentient you know what we need to tell dan i gotta remind dan you've got to watch runaway okay so it's a tom Selleck movie from the 80s just Everyone who's ever watched the movie is listening to this going, oh. But I made him watch Iron Sky, and now he's vowed he's going to make me watch some shitty Steven Seagal movie. He just hasn't decided which one yet. Tell, suggest Runaway. So, tell him I suggested Runaway. I think he might he might be down for that one. Is it going to make me more paranoid? Um. Hey, look, we got another story. Mm. Uh, so... There's been this program for a while from the Department of Defense where, and God only knows who thought this was a fucking good idea in the first place. They take surplus weapons from the military and give them to police departments. Here, local Mayberry PD. Like, Machine guns and tanks and shit. Tanks. tanks, rocket launchers. So the uh, the general accounting office, which is maybe the, not rocket launchers. It, that the general accounting office is the branch of the government that is tasked with keeping an eye on other branches of the government. They are supposed to make sure everything. So they did an audit of this program. Oh dear. It turns out it's not that hard to get free machine guns. Well, I mean, this is America. This is a as soon as you're 18, you should get a standard issue machine gun. I mean, we have rights. What uh the general accounting office found, if I get back, what they discovered was they built a fake website with a fake address. Oh, God. Applied for this program. And here's what happened. The big, this is a quote from the General Accounting Office. The biggest problem is that the internal control process for this program were really broken. We found, for example, that when we applied for the program as a fake organization, no one even called us to verify the information. They didn't attempt to come out to the location to visit us. Secondly, when the investigators went to the location, they were able to actually get the items without presenting the proper identification. Third, they were able to get a quantity of items that wasn't consistent with what we bid for. Actually, we got more items. 
And fourth, we found out that the program just doesn't have the framework in order to do a fraud mitigation at all stages of the program. Essentially, that puts any organization at risk of this happening again. This is one of those times when, like, <clears throat> I minor in journalism. Journalism is really important to me. But this is one of the times where I'm torn because I'm like, on the one hand, this is a thing that needed to be exposed. On the other hand, I don't want the general public having this information. <laughs> like, on the other hand, I, I wonder if putting this out in the public is doing more harm than good because some fucking yokel in ass backwards America will form the American militia of jackassery. All they had to do was set up a fake website with a fake address. And they were they didn't even ask them for any papers. They got one point two million dollars worth of military weapons. Jesus. Including yeah, night vision goggles. He would be losing his mind right now. Um, the program has given upwards of six billion dollars worth of weapons out during its six. I mean, I live in New Jersey. Sure, I would like a tank. That would be super useful for traffic. But I I don't need a tank and I shouldn't have one. I just it's it's like for fuck you don't just walk up and go, hey, y'all want some guns? We got some guns for it. It's you more want than them? guns. It's you want some fucking military assault weapons. Yeah. Tanks. Like we got us a jet this plane. This is why the shit in Ferguson popped off as bad as it did, because they rolled in there like the fucking military. We got us an F-16. We don't want to know what to do with it. Y'all want it? It's just sitting there. It runs just fine. <laughs> we can just put it on... The wipers don't work no more. That's all. We can put it on trailer hitch for you. Have it down here for like three hours. It ain't no problem. Uh, and the problem is, like, this stuff then gets used when it doesn't need to be. Yep. They rolled out fucking tanks in Ferguson for a bunch of people on foot. Like, and it, it's bad enough that police uh, departments who don't, who aren't supposed to have, you're not at war with your own populace. Right. You're supposed to protect and serve. That's bad enough. But now, just any old motherfucker. What did the what did the cop car and transformers say on side of it? Instead, uh, of, if you, you had to look really fast, but it was like instead of to protect and serve, it was like to enslave and terrify or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah, I'm already concerned about cops. I'm mean, I'm more concerned about someone like me. Yeah, and I don't need I'm this. Saying is you put this information out to the public, I guarantee you, some asshole is going to try it. Well, hopefully the fact the General Accounting Office is making light of this in news reports means there's been some over... Oh, I forget who's in the White House right now. We're to fucked. punish and enslave. Thank you. We're fucked. We're, We're so fucked. Uh, so moving on to something completely different. Have you ever had one of those moments where you, you're, you realize you've left both your and your phone somewhere. No. Never done that? No. I've done that. I've left my keys and my phone sitting on like a store counter. <gasps> and when you get to your car and you realize there's this moment yeah, I imagine. <laughs> of dread that just like, washes. Like, am I even a person anymore? It takes, a, it's like, first it's like, what? Well, I, you, you, so that's a, that, I like the fact that no matter how wide your eyes get, they can always get a little wider. They're never all like one day you're just going to roll back and an eyeball is going to pop out. <laughs> and on that day, I will be very impressed with myself. Um, so you can get it back in. Yeah. So it, I, I've had this experience. It, it's kind of terrifying. Well, this this dude figured out how to make it even worse. 
Robbery suspect arrested after leaving keys oh, and cell no. phone behind. Yakima, Washington. A man who Yakima police say robbed a convenience store Sunday night was arrested after leaving his car keys and cell phone at the store. Dude. Lacey, really? Say Lacey Bernard Anderson, 37, robbed Yakima Avenue Quick Stop just after 9.30 p.m. Sunday. Anderson told the clerk he was armed, reached for his waistband, but did not show a weapon. He took $180 from the register, but he left his car keys and a cell phone behind. They say they found Anderson, who matched the robber's description, uh, two blocks south of the convenience store. Police say Anderson had bills and denomination matching the cash tag from the store. He also had an eight-inch steak knife concealed in a sock he was wearing. Denying any involvement in the robbery, Anderson also told police the suspect was his twin. Oh, really? You know, they can check that. They can, they can. Whether or not you're a twin, they can, they can find that out. It's not one of those things where they're like, oh, I'm sorry, you have a twin? Oh. I did. My, My bad. bad. Does he have a goatee? Because <laughs> that's probably the guy we're looking for then. <laughs> also, armed robbery. Things you might want pockets. <laughs> or maybe like a bag of some kind. Or even one of them damn stupid ass fucking chains that people put on their wallets. A fucking fanny pack, man. Anything. I don't know that anyone's going to take you seriously trying to hold them up with a fanny pack, but whatever. At least you won't leave your phone there. <laughs> that's the fun. No, man, that's my twin. Oh. Okay. Oh, does that mean if we take out this phone, your name is going to be in it? Uh, well, me and my twin, we got the same name, you see. Because <laughs> our mom didn't have to worry, didn't want to have to worry about getting us mixed up. So she just gave us both the same name so she wouldn't be calling us the wrong name all the time. Sure, people will believe that. Yeah, totally. That, that's completely sensible. That makes... What the fuck, man? All this... <laughs> you leave your fucking keys and phone at the robbery. You kind of need the keys for, say, your getaway car. You know he was just wandering around in circles going, I know I had those motherfuckers a minute ago. And it's not like you can go back in and be like, hey, I left my shit. <laughs> it's not like you can go back for it. Hey, man, I know I just robbed y'all about like 10 minutes ago. But have you seen a pink iPhone 3? We, it's got a Hello Kitty on the case. No, 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 I haven't seen it. Why don't you give me your name and phone number in case it turns up? God. Give me your address so I can mail it to you. I just have no respect for incompetent criminals. I just don't. You're engaged in crime. I don't, I don't know if I ever told you. Back when I worked in the world of way overpriced makeup, we got a package one day at the store. It's This is tangentially related. This lady, inside the package, it was like $300 worth of makeup, which at this particular store was less than you might think. And a note that she bought this stuff and she didn't like it. And she wanted us to refund her with her credit card number and address. And I'm like, you... Instead of dragging your ass in here to return this shit, you sent us back the product that you already paid for. And then you also sent us your credit card number, just assuming that we would credit you back and not resell the product, keep you charged, and buy a bunch of shit on your credit card. All things I wouldn't do, but she doesn't fucking know that. Don't don't leave your personal shit with people you don't know, especially if you're robbing them. <sighs> Try not to leave identifying things behind when you commit crimes. Just So, our next story is 
God damn it. I have to say, I'm a little impressed with this. There are things that keep happening over and over on this show. Yeah. And usually, they're not the things I expect to keep happening over and over. Like, But that's the fun part. This happened again. Somebody added to the goddamn scoreboard. Brothers... Two and five steal mother's car for trip to grandfather. God, don't leave the car keys with your kids either. Those two, little fuckers will take it. Two brothers aged five and two stole wow. their mother's car and wrecked it on a drive to their grandfather's house. Uh, Putnam County Sheriff believe the toddlers probably teamed up to work the pedals and steer the wheel before crashing it in a ditch. The pair made it three miles down the road and successfully navigated multiple turns. They were not hurt. Officials are waiting charge to get the mother. They had taken their mother's 2005 Ford Focus after finding the keys in the floor mat while playing in the front yard. I, Wait, she just leaves her keys in the car all the time? Who the fuck? I mean, maybe it's West Virginia, so maybe that's a thing you can do in West Virginia. I've always lived up here in the fuck you Northeast, where if you do that, you're just giving your car away. Two and five. God damn! I'm amazed at that age that they even know how to operate a vehicle. Like, when I was a... Like, I don't think I would have understood the fact that you have to turn the key and put it in gear. Well, now, now you don't. True, now you have fucking push-button start. You have push-button start, and you have... The, the, you start it all from the key fob. Yeah, but... They, like... How do they know what gear to put it in? Like, at five? I could never have conceived of that. Well, if it's an automatic, it's you just... Pull it to drive. Right, but you have to know what that means. <laughs> Grand Theft Auto, they're two and five. It's West Virginia. If these kids are playing fucking Grand Theft Auto, the stolen car is the least of their problems. Because <laughs> there's probably dead hookers under the barn. <laughs> I just... it. Two... But that's what always amazes me about these stories is, like, as a kid... I didn't, like, there's more than just steer and hit gas pedal to drive a car. There's more to it than that. I love how the, 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 two, the five-year-old wrote the two-year-old into this. Yeah. And I, I just, I don't know, was the two-year-old pushing the pedals or was he steering? I gotta think he was, like, on the floor pushing the pedals. <laughs> and the five-year-old was up top. Because when you're two years old, your arms are, like, that long. You're basically a T-Rex at that age. So, like, <laughs> you're not doing a lot of great steering. You gotta watch your damn kids. Because they are, That's like... Like, how, do, how does this happen? Well, you know what? Florida saw this and said, hold my beer. Oh, boy. Florida always does, doesn't it? Florida never gets to drink its beer because someone's always fucking holding it. Daytona, Florida. Flashy, 10-year-old boy caught four times in six weeks for car theft. Wow. A 10-year-old Florida boy described by police as flashy cut off, cut off his ankle monitor the day Why after... Why is a 10-year-old wearing an ankle monitor? The day after being charged with stealing a car... And stole another one. I don't care if you're 10. We're putting fucking ankle bracelets on 10-year-olds now? Police say it was his fourth arrest for car theft in six weeks. <laughs> Daytona police investigators noticed a brashness that's not common for children that young. No. Uh, in fact, Captain Jennifer Crochelle told the newspaper, the boy is so small... When police seized the stolen car, the driver's seat was pushed up to the steering wheel. Has anybody asked this kid if everything's okay at home? Like, is everything all right? 
Are you being raised by killer clowns or something? Is there a reason you desperately have somewhere to go? Four car arrests in six weeks. Cut off his damn ankle monitor. I'm a little weirded out that we're putting ankle bracelets on 10-year-olds. Like, even if he is stealing cars, <laughs> first of all, I feel like the answer there then is your parents should be watching you more closely. Not the state puts an ankle bracelet on you, but maybe mom or dad or Aunt Bertha or who the fuck ever watches you. I, it's just, it, you gotta watch, Dan, because 10 year old can steal cars. Yeah. I'm really impressed. I know. We were not that cool. I didn't know fuck about hot wiring. We didn't even have the internet. Cause we couldn't look this shit up. I didn't know shit about hot wiring yeah. cars. I knew you yanked some wires out and you sparked two of them together and the car would right. start. And then you just go. And then you just go or something. But or I was not this cool when I was 10. <laughs> I was like really into Shira. Ah, uh, donut. One one person in the channel has watched The Wire. One person in the channel has watched The Wire. I am so I am so proud of you. If you'd watched Twin Peaks last night, I think this kid was on Twin Peaks. Cause it's not a huge spoiler for the show, but like all of a sudden, shots are fired through the window of the double R diner. So everybody runs outside to see what's going on. And it turns out it was this like eight year old kid who found a gun in the back of his parents' car and just started shooting. And the kid is standing there and he's like the boy version of Leanna Mormont, I think, because he's just standing there like, what? Yeah, I shot up your fucking diner. Their kids menu sucks. <laughs> Uh, Kids are fucking hardcore these days, man. Speaking of guns. From the Department of a gun is not a remote control for life. Comes really to not. Us. Even in America. Hylea, Florida. Fucking Florida. And we got video. Let's have a look. So um, I've been upset when uh, there have been like utility vehicles on my street before. Oh, this fucking asshole. It's annoying, sure. However, this has never occurred to me as the best course of action. Nope. So, there are these AT&T trucks on this guy's street. I'm no fan of AT&T. But, he's sick of them being parked outside, so... The obvious solution... Gotta take, stop a second, check, takes out his gun, and this old motherfucker taking all day with it, too. Yeah. He, like, stops to reload at some point. There he goes. Shoots the tires out of the car. While these... And all I could think of watching this was... I'm not going to get them off your street any faster. No. Nope. Like, did you think I was going to speed it up? Because it's not. And now there are going to be more trucks on your street because they're going to have to call fucking triple X. The voice you're hearing right now, that is the uh, that is the utility worker on the phone with 911. Oh, and there, now he, now he fires a cap into the engine. And everybody knows that makes the car instantly explode. All right, no problem. Movies have taught us this. At least, highly a police ca gun. Sergeant an Carl Zogby said AT&T an trucks were hanging utility lines, uh, were hanging lines of utility poles on the residential street All when right. George right. Go Jorge Ho is that Jorge yeah, yeah, or I'm George Go? Uh, yeah. I can't find his name in here. He just keeps shooting. Uh, he's about 64. Jorge Hove. Jorge Hove, 64, got upset and told the workers to move away from his home. Workers told Hove that 
They would move as soon as possible, but needed to finish their work. They were parked on public street. Zogby said right. home, then went to his home and no started shooting Nobody's at the trucks. Home, but he's, he's, he's still shooting the truck right now. Zogby said it's unclear it's whether Hove was also aiming for the workers. He flattened the tires. He shot into the body of the yes. trucks. He shot out one of the radiators of the trucks. Okay. They were in public access. They were working utility lines. They have every legal right to do that. Right. Do so, apparently. Got upset for a reason. Went to his house. Nobody was injured. He, he just, got upset. He just keeps no, no, shooting. Somebody up in the bucket. Somebody's I, up in the I bucket right now. I get upset and they can't sometimes. Come he's shooting the truck. They've been... They've been carving holes in like the main road through my neighborhood for about a month now and different parts of the road are closed on different days and it's annoying it's an inconvenience i have never once thought you know what i should fucking do i should shoot out their tires that is fucking show them yeah because you know the first thing that happens is they know where you live yeah you came out of your house that's your they saw you so they're not leaving any faster. That won't matter, though, because you're going to jail and you're not going to live there anymore. You're going to jail. The, the, the police are not going to be like, oh, well, it's OK. You know. Oh, I mean, they were really inconveniencing you. I can I can see when you start shooting stuff. It's a good bet. You go into jail. Oh, that'll be fair. This is Florida and they have a stand your ground law. So as long as he can say if he can prove in court that those trucks <laughs> We're threatening him. <laughs> He's all good. Well, they did have flashing lights. Yeah, they that were could, scary. That could be construed as... I as... could stand my ground. <laughs> the best part, you didn't hear in the, in, the, uh, in the video, one of the guys was stuck up in the bucket. In the cherry picker? In the cherry picker bucket. Jeez, can you imagine? You're up there. You can't get down. You can't that's, run. That's when you got to pray this guy has terrible aim. In case he spots you. You got to pray he's a fucking retired stormtrooper. Guns are not a remote control for life. You can't just... Also, if something's bothering you, think about your solution to the problem and whether or not it's going to make that problem worse. Like if, if that car is in your way, making it immobile, not going to get it out of your way. Yeah. It's the cars can't go. Like try to think logically. They're going to be there for much longer now. Yeah. And there's going to be more trucks and police cars. Your street's a fucking mess. Where are you going? Nowhere. Well, I guess I guess the first thing we learned tonight was if you want the trucks to go away, call a supervisor. Don't or just fucking deal with it because you'd like your phone to work and that's life. Yeah. It's sometimes sometimes there are inconveniences and that's life. That's We learned that you got to watch your damn kids. Yeah. So, apparently, they're just stealing fucking cars all over the place. Well, apparently, there's a fucking kindergarten underground drag racing network that we don't know anything about. <laughs> they're doing, like, the Fast and the Furious nap time. That you, you've just... Someone is good. That is the next sequel now. Thank you, Tara. Yeah. What have you done? It's going to be little, little, little kids drifting. What have you done? Why did you do this? That's going to be the... Now I'm picturing like little kids drag racing with fucking kids bop playing. <laughs> They're all badass leaning back. Keep rolling, rolling, rolling. What? Keep rolling, rolling, rolling. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We've learned if you're going to do crime, pockets. Pockets are good. Yeah. Pockets, pockets are helpful for crime. Yeah. You don't want to crime with your hands full. We've we've learned that uh, the government is just handing out machine guns and nobody cares who they go to. No, there's no 
You'd think you'd want some oversight on a program like that. Maybe. You'd want... You know. Someone they, checking the records? Just to know where they... Just... Anything? Nope. A phone call? I think the cat shelter I work at puts more screening into people get to, that get to adopt cats. Then... Well, they should, because cats are living things, but... Maybe you could put as much screening into people that get military grade hardware as we do into who gets a kitten. I don't think that's unreasonable. I mean, fuck, you ask for ID, don't you? We ask for references. <laughs> God, we're all gonna die. And finally this week we've learned, well, sometimes if the AT&T asks you for help, you're not being punked. Someone it's just the rise of the machines. Someone's just having a really, really bad day. My assumption would be the machines were rising and I would immediately like call Dan in a panic and ask him to get the bug out bag because we were going to have to go. Lady, Cause... could you help me? You're not going to fool me. No. I'm not I'm on to you, Skynet! Matrix. I, I see where- I've seen this movie! I have. Seriously. Doesn't end well for the meat sacks. Seriously, Dan has got to get you to watch Runaway. Seriously. Do you think that's a good idea?